we're going to be converting U.S. customary measurements to each other. This is lesson 14b. If you miss 14a, there's a link in the description, okay? One of the easiest ways to change from one unit of measure to another is to use proportions. We learned about that in video 6f, and there's a link for that one too. We use the appropriate conversion for that measurement. One minute equals 60 seconds. We write a proportion, both ratios in the same order with the like units on top. So what we're going to do is, because this one says how many minutes are in 240 seconds, we're looking for minutes. So minutes is going to be the numerator. And seconds will be the denominator. Whichever one we're looking for is going to be the numerator. Okay? So we're looking for minutes. We know one minute is 60 seconds, so we can write our proportion. There's 240 seconds. The 60 becomes a 240. The 1 becomes whatever x is. We cross multiply 1 times 240 is 240. We divide it by this third number here, the 60, and we get 4 minutes. We solve for x, that unknown amount. On a calculator, you would just put in 1, multiplication sign, 2, 4, 0, division sign, 6, 0, equals. Pretty much just the way it's written here, okay? Here's an example. A piece of fabric is 6 and a half feet long. What is its length in inches? So now we're looking for inches, and 1 foot equals 12 inches. We use the correct conversion. We write a proportion, and we cross, multiply, divide, and solve. So because we're looking for inches, we're going to have inches over feet. The inches is what we're looking for. That's the numerator. We know 12 inches is 1 foot. We can convert this 6 and a half to a decimal very quickly because it's an easy fraction. Then we can do 12 times 6.5. We divide it by the third number. Remember, that's how we do proportions. And we get 78 inches. If we have a weird fraction, we can write it the mixed number or the fraction as a denominator. We can do that. We have to multiply 12 times 6 and a half now. So what we do is we make the 6 and a half into an improper fraction. Remember how to do that, right? We multiply the 6 times the denominator and add the numerator, and then we use whatever denominator is there. So 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. We're going to have 13 halves. Now we have 12 times 13 halves. And we can cross-cancel here. We've got a 2 and a 12. There's 1, 2 here and 6, 2's here. So we do 6 times 13 over 1. And that's going to be a 78 over a 1. Now when we divide it by 1, we still get 78. So x equals 78 inches. So depending on what that fraction is, that's going to help you decide whether to go with a decimal or to turn it into an improper fraction. If it's something like 1 fourth, that's easy. We know that's 0.25. Like in money, it's a quarter of a dollar, right? If it's 3 fourths, that's easy also. That's 0.75. So that could be done as a decimal very quickly. If it's a weird fraction like 9 21 or 5 18 well, then keep it as a fraction and do it this way and then turn it into an improper fraction and then cancel if you can and find the solution, all right? So it's going to depend on what the problem is that's going to make you decide which way to go, okay? So it's very, very important that you memorize this U.S. customer units chart that was on page 164, and we know most of them already. We know, usually, most people know there's 12 inches in a foot or there's 60 seconds in a minute. There's just a few that we don't use very often that are going to be like how many feet are in a mile or how many yards are in a mile or how many pints are in a gallon. Those are the ones that are going to be a little tougher to memorize, okay? So just write it in your spiral or, you know, have someone quiz you or whatever you need to do. Sometimes the conversions don't come out evenly, and when there's a remainder, we can write it as a fraction or a decimal. decimal. To convert 88 ounces to pounds, it's important to know that one pound is 16 ounces. We're looking for pounds, so that's going to be our numerator over the ounces. One pound is 16 ounces. This 16 is going to become an 88. The one is going to become whatever x is. We cross multiply 1 times 88 and then divide it by that third number, the 16. We get 5.5. So we know x equals 5.5. And as a fraction or decimal, the remainder will use the same unit name as the whole unit portion. So if we've got 5 and a half, it's going to be pounds. If it's 5 and 5 tenths, it's going to be pounds. See? We don't have to say the ounces. Now, we know that if there's 16 ounces to a pound, then 8 ounces is half a pound, right? So it's really 5 pounds, 8 ounces. It's the same thing as these. 
And be careful if you have to convert a couple times how many pints are in four gallons. So you might remember that there's two pints that are equal to one quart, but how many pints are in a gallon? So you might have to convert the pints to quarts and then the quarts to a gallon. This would be two times four. It would be eight pints equals one gallon. And we're looking for pints, so that's our numerator. Okay? So eight pints is one gallon. We want to go to four gallons, so what's x? We do eight times four is 32, divided by that last number, the one, and we get 32 pints in four gallons. Okay? It's going to be problems like this. Which box weighs the most? We have box A that's 128 ounces, box B that's 7.5 pounds, and box C that's 7 pounds 14 ounces. And we can, if we convert these to the same units, we'll find the answer. So because two of them say pounds, let's convert that to pounds. There's 16 ounces in one pound, so we can divide the 128 by 16. That'll give us 8 pounds. So we know box A weighs the most at 8 pounds. Now it says, what is the weight of box C in ounces? Well, we've got 7 pounds, 14 ounces. We've got 7 pounds, and if we multiply it by the 16 ounces per pound, that's going to give us 112 ounces. Now we can add that straggling 14 ounces that's off on the side and get 126 ounces. Lisa's baby is 23 weeks old. How many days old is her baby? We're looking for days, so that's going to be the numerator over the weeks. There's seven days in one week. It's 23 weeks. We need to find x. We do 7 times 23, which is 161, divided by 1 is 161. We can also quickly say to ourselves, well, we know there's seven days in a week, and if there's 23 weeks, we just multiply 23 times 7. We get 161, okay? That's easy when one of the units, one of the, either the numerator or denominator is a 1, See? So now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 165. Just make sure that you really, really know this chart, okay? Because I don't think there's a copy of this chart for the test. You have to just know these measurements. Our next video is going to be operations with measurements. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So it's really important you know this chart because we're going to get, in, get into these operations. And I have a link to all these helpful videos. Okay? So you should be okay. If you need any help, just click on the description, and there'll be a way to go back and solve some answers. Try not to get ahead of yourself, okay? One step at a time, and you'll be fine. I think you can do this. If this video is helpful, remember to hit the like button, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.